Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today I'm going to be showing you what are the render settings that you should use uh, for Blender 3.0. Okay, so let's say um, that you've finished your render, as in like you've finished all the light settings and you're really happy with your image and how it looks in the camera, um, but you don't know what render settings to use. So first of all, you want to go down to the render property settings and you want to change this from EV to cycles. So the reason why we like to use cycles is because it has better visual quality, but it takes longer to render. So EV uh, is really fast to render, but the visual quality is lower and you have to mess around with stuff like irradiance volumes. It's not really that fun, um, but you can get a, a result that's close to cycles, but it's really annoying. So second thing you want to do is you want to use GPU compute if you have a GPU, uh, because your graphics card is much, much faster. Um, third thing you want to do is you want to go edit preferences and you want to go down to system. And what I like to use is I like to use the CUDA. So you want to make sure CUDA is checked and you want to make sure your GPU and your CPU are both enabled. Um, some friends um, that I know of use optics and that's faster for them. Like once the render settings or one render kernels are enabled, but generally from my experience, I've found CUDA to be better. Okay. Um, okay. So now we get down to the sample settings for Blender 3.0. So the sample settings for Blender 3.0 are kind of not great. <laughs> um, they're just too high for normal computers. Um, so really for the viewport, like you can just get by with like something like, um, like 30 or something, 32. You can get by with something like that. And max samples, you wanna go down to something like 128 or 256. Like it doesn't matter too much. Um, so, but you don't want it to be a thousand roughly because otherwise that will take you a long, long time to render. Second thing is like these noise thresholds, um, you can actually turn them uh, down. So, uh, sorry, sorry, you can turn them up actually. So you can turn them up um, if you wanna take less time. Um, but in this case, I usually like to keep the default settings. I don't really mind. So I'm just gonna reset this to default settings. That's fine. Okay, um, but just make sure that max samples are not so high. Okay, now, the other thing that you might wanna do is you might wanna go down to the film tab and turn on this transparent thing. So this uh, only makes a difference if, let me just remove my volumetrics. Can you see how like the background is actually like checkered? If I turn it off, basically, it will have gray in those parts instead, uh, which is probably not what you want in a lot of the time. If you're rendering a PNG, you want it to be transparent. Okay, that's good. Um, and the final thing that you probably want to do here is if you're in Blender 2.93 and below, you need to, um, you need to change your tile size to 256 by 256 for the X and Y, uh, but Blender 3.0, it doesn't matter so much. Um, also for your look here, uh, generally we like to use filmic and also medium high contrast. You can see how, uh, that bumped up the thing. So the default is medium contrast and you can see that it's a little bit grayish. So if you're not planning to do any color correction outside of this, uh, in fact, if you're doing color correction, you should probably use a different mode altogether. Um, but um, if you're not planning to do any color correction, you can just change it to medium high contrast and it will make your image look immediately better uh, by adding contrast. Okay, um, other than that, there's another thing that you probably wanna have a look at, which is the resolution settings. So you can see here, um, I haven't really optimized my camera for this portrait. So you wanna really optimize your camera to be the most interesting parts, right? So you want less of your background and you wanna zoom into your subject as much as possible. And part of that, apart from moving the camera uh, with the um, view, camera to view things, so you can actually move uh, what angle you want and whatever that, like the second part, if I just turn this off and I control Z that, cause I actually want the previous angle. Okay, I can't get the previous angle, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, fine, fine, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it back to the normal angle. Um, but part of that is the resolution itself. Okay, so there's a lot of confusion around this. Basically, the thing is, you want to basically increase, if you increase the Y value here, it will make up to a certain point the, the frame larger. Okay, so it will make this frame larger here. In fact, if you just change this, so instead of 1920 by 1080, which is YouTube's landscape, uh, thing, if you change it to 1080 by 1080, you have a square frame, right? Because 
the the relationship, the, as, the, the ratio between these two numbers is what matters the most. Because you can actually type in numbers here like 200% to make your image a higher resolution or lower resolution. Um, so technically, what you want to do is you want to make sure that these are either one to two. Actually, no, you, you can just do it by eye basically. So basically until um, it fits your image. In this case, I think, I think roughly around here. So you want to crop down into your image just the most important parts. Usually you don't want any of the background, you want mostly your subject itself because that's the most interesting. And you can also do one thing here. You can click on the camera itself, if I can find the camera. And you can also experiment with the focal length. So I have mine really high as 157, but you may want to try using an 84 millimeter camera length or something else and just see how it affects it. You'll see that at lower focal lengths, you'll start to see a lot of distortion. So you'll see, like if you zoom in, you'll see that like it looks a little bit weird, um, but at, long, at really close focal lengths, you'll see that the image is really proportional. And I'm not gonna pretend I really do know too much about them, but um, just look into real camera fo focal lengths if you want to look at that. Okay, the final thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that uh, your camera, uh, you enable, go to render layers here, uh, view layer properties, and you wanna enable the denoising data pass. Okay, and what you wanna do here is you wanna to go to the compositing tab and you want to press on use nodes. Okay, so this is the final step that a lot of people don't do. Um, so if you go shift A and you get the denoise node right here, and then you just attach noisy image uh, to image, noisy normal to normal, and al denoising albedo to albedo. So how did I uh, get that thing here? I just press shift A, okay? So shift A to add a node, I press search, and then I search up denoise, and I press enter, then I can create a node there. And then I link this image to that image. This means that you'll have to use a lot less samples to get a less noisy image, okay? Because if you don't use that, your image will be really noisy. Okay, and just as a bonus tip, I guess, um, if you really want, you can actually also use this preset by um, Pit Princess. So if I just type in UE Shader Script, which is a plugin I made, Adam Yan, UE Shader Script, GitHub. You should find it there. Okay, yeah, so if you type that into Google, click on the first link, you go to the releases, and then you download this right here. Okay, and you press uh, start download. Okay, and then in Blender here, so in Blender, uh, what you do is you just go edit preferences. So this is if you want even better denoising, you wanna install and you wanna install uh, UE Shader Script, uh, this one here. So you press install, I won't do it because I've already installed it. Uh, but once you've installed that there, you want to type in UE space shader and you wanna enable it on this left hand side here. Okay, so you wanna make sure that this is checked. Okay, from there you should see that there's this new panel here. And if you look at the very bottom of this, uh, there's actually this one here, there's this thing here. So you use this, uh, it's Blender 2.93 and below, you wanna press this, but obviously we're in Blender 3.0, so we wanna use the first option. Okay, and this will do a lot of the options for you and you should see custom denoising setup was added successfully. And what it does is it just adds, it does the previous settings, uh, but it also adds these ones here. So it denoises each of the passes separately and this will get you a really, really clean image, like even cleaner than the previous setup um, because we're denoising the gloss, the diffuse, the transmission separately and the emission and uh, environment. Uh, things and also the other thing it does is under the render passes right here it enables all those so we can actually uh, put them in the compositing tab okay so yeah from there that's actually the best way you can do it but you can just go render render image it should take a lot less long so you can even turn up the noise threshold if you want it to go faster so instead of 0 0.01 you could go with 0 0.1 this will uh, lessen your render times also, as a side note, I should mention, I should mention you should be rendering as PNG and RGBA and color depth, but these default settings are usually fine. On lower uh, end computers, you might wanna turn down your max samples even uh, more. So if you do use uh, Pit Princess denoising, remember that it will take a lot longer. So if you're just doing preview images, don't use uh, Pit Princess denoising. So it's finally done. 
So it's actually cleaned up the image even better. So it actually looks, so if you look down in here, you can see there's like no noise whatsoever and it's a really clean render. Um, there is that little seam, but that's my model problem, not like the actual <laughs> uh, denoising problem. But if you look inwards, you can see there's like no noise whatsoever. It's a very, very clean image, even at uh, very close. Um, yeah, so from here, you can just go image, save, and you can just save it wherever uh, because you need to save the image before, it, like Blender doesn't automatically save it for images. So let me just put it here and I'll just call it Fang Recolor Denoise Tutorial. Okay, and you can save image and then you are done. So yeah, that's it. So yeah, thank you so much for being here. Uh, you are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.